Hello everyone. In this lecture, we will learn about media queries and box sizing concepts in CSS. Media queries. What are media queries? Media queries are used to create responsive websites. So you know what is responsive website, right? In media queries, we add breakpoints for different screen sizes and define CSS properties separately for different screen sizes. By doing that way, we are able to create um, responsive websites. Let's look at it with an example. In our previous lecture, we worked on Parallax website project, right? Parallax website page has media queries included in the CSS code and that is why it was responsive. See, let's open the developer tools and uh, view the same web page in mobile view. See, the text parallax website is overlapping over an one another. That is because I have commented the media queries block in the code. And since media queries is not there, the site is not displaying properly in mobile device. In the desktop view, the web page is good. So I'm reducing the screen width. And when it reaches the mobile view, the text is overlapping. So to fix this text overlapping, we have to use media queries. This is a parallax website project CSS file. This is a media query block. In line number 59, we have at media screen and maximum with 500 pixels. So we have to write media queries using keyword at media screen. Here maximum with 50 pixels, sorry, 500 pixels specifies um, only when the screen width becomes less than or equal to 500 pixels, the given CSS rules will be applied. Right? Here in our example, when the, uh, like when the web page is uh, in the desktop view, that is, it is 1496 pixels. So now everything is normal. So I am decreasing the screen size when, when it goes below 500 pixels, that's where we are getting the problem. Right? This is only for this case. In some other website, we may get the problem uh, somewhere around 800 pixels or 900 pixels. In that case, we have to modify the code. So for this uh, web page, we are getting problem when like see 480 pixels is uh, it's uh, fine. Even for 480 pixels, it's fine. So when it gets to 430 pixels or something, the text is overlapping. So, but uh, we are uh, using 500 pixels as a generic way. So, uh, like whenever um, uh, the screen width is less than 500 pixels, we want a different CSS rules to be applied. And so that's what we are specifying using media queries. That is, for mobile devices, we are redefining the CSS rule. The normal CSS rule is already in place. So, in this case, we have a class selected dark text, right? In line number 24, we can see this dark text class selector is defined. See, we have given font size as uh, 27 pixels and other properties are also specified. Now, the font size is a problem. When, um, uh, like when we decrease the screen size, the font size is bigger, so it is overlapping. So, we are redefining the same CSS selector dark text using media queries. So here in line number 62, we are like we are redefining uh, this uh, dark text CSS selector for ma uh, that is uh, for a screen width less than or equal to 500 pixels and we have reduced the font size. See here font size is 20 pixels whereas for the desktop view in uh, line number 20, 29 we have given font size as 27 pixels and here we have given font size as 20 pixels. And we have also uh, uh, like um, reduce the padding and letter spacing for uh, better output. So by using media queries, we can specify device specific CSS rules for making the website responsive. So let me uncomment this one. It's not refresh, right? That's why the text is overlapping. I'm going to refresh the page now. Now you can see the font size is 20 pixels for um, uh, width for screen width less than 500 pixels and if we go beyond 500 pixels you can see the font size is 27 pixels so like this you can uh, we can uh, redefine all the css properties uh, for uh, different screen sizes so here uh, we have used just uh, 500 pixels we can use whatever uh, screen width we want here 
and there is also another parameter called minimum width so we can also specify minimum width and maximum width we can say like minimum width um 500 pixels and maximum width uh, 900 pixels that means the css rule specified here will be applied for like for the screen size greater than 500 and less than 900 less than or equal to 900 right okay so next uh, we will look at box sizing property box sizing property in css i think it will be better to understand with an uh, understand the concept with an example okay we have two divs here uh, with uh, the first with the class name div1 and uh, the next with the class name div2 let's go to css and uh, define the styling for these two divs i am in line number 57 so in line number 57 and 58 we have uh, styled the selectors div1 and div2 here both div1 and div2 are given same width and height right width is 300 pixels 300 pixels height is 100 pixels 100 pixels so let's save this and go to the output okay i am in the bottom of the page so here we have div1 and div2 okay let me move the developer tools to the right here we have div1 and this is div2 see here the div2 block is bigger than div1 block right even though both the blocks have same width and height div2 is bigger than div1 why is it so see here div2 has width 300 pixels height 100 pixels and div1 also has width 300 pixels height 100 pixels then why is div2 bigger than div1 that is because of the padding 50 pixels given for div2 so let me uncheck the padding now we can see both the divs are of same size so this is because of the padding given for div2 so to understand the box sizing property we have to uh, like we have to understand how the actual width and height of the element is calculated so i am in line number 60 the actual width and height of element is calculated as the width given in the CSS uh, and then padding plus border. That means here for div 1, the width given is 300 pixels. No padding for div 1. Border is 2 pixels. 2 pixels on all sides. So the total width of this div 1 element is 300 pixels plus 0, no padding plus 4 pixels because 2 pixels on left and 2 pixels on right so total width of this div 1 element is 304 pixels whereas the actual height of this uh, element is actual height is it's calculated similarly to width so height plus padding plus border here height is 100 pixels no padding border is 2 pixels drop and down so it's 4 pixels totally so it's the total height for div 1 is 104 104 pixels right and for div 2 we'll do the similar like uh, calculation here in this case actual width for div 2 element will be 300 plus we have padding right padding 50 pixels padding 50 pixels on all the four sides that means 100 pixels left and right together so 300 plus 100 plus 4 right 404 pixels similarly we have to calculate the height which will be 100 plus 100 plus 4 204 right let's go to the developer tools and highlight this element i'm highlighting div 2 now you can see the distribution so actual given width is 300 pixels padding is 50 50 so now when i highlight on this div 2 element you can see that the width is displayed as 403.2 so approximately 404 pixels width right and height is 203.2 204 pixels right approximately so similarly when i highlight on div 1 we can see the width is 303.2 and height is 103.2 so you can like can you see when i highlight you can uh, see a tooltip next to div 1 right i cannot move my cursor there if i move my cursor uh, the tooltip will disappear okay so this is the total width of div 1 
and here the total width of div2 is 403 and height is 203. So this is how uh, the actual width and height will be calculated for all the elements. Now what is the purpose of box sizing CSS property? So this box sizing CSS property is used to maintain the specified width and height of the element by including the padding and border values in the element's total width or height. That is, in CSS I am going to include box sizing border box property here. Box sizing values border box and similarly for div2 also I am going to include the same one box sizing border box. So now let's refresh this page. Now we can see both div1 and div2 are of same size. Right? See for div2 I am highlighting on div2. See here for div2 the content width is reduced to 196 pixels. So padding 100 pixels on left and right side. So it's 296 plus border. So everything adds up to 300 pixels. Right? And similarly for div1, the content width is reduced to 296 pixels and remaining 4 pixels is added from the border. So by this way, box sizing property ensures the width and height of the elements always remains consistent. And applying this property to all the elements in a web page is a safe and wise way of creating a web page. So let me include this box sizing property using universal selector. Here we have used universal selector which means this box sizing property will be, will be applied to all the elements in the web page for consistent look. And this is a very important property. When we work on some projects, the consistent look is very important. And this box sizing property will automatically adjust the overall elements width by reducing the contents width. In this lecture, we learned about media queries and box sizing property. In the next lecture, we look at overflow property in CSS.